gosh. That's... Hey guys, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. And I just realized when I sat down that I had not hit the record button. It's been, it's been a while, so I'm making mistakes today. Um, this is page one, and you didn't get to see any, any of it built, but I'm going to tell you what I did. So this is... Um, strips cut off of one of the 12 by 12s um and i chose the 12 by 12 because i like the scale i'm using a 12 by 12 and an 8 by 8. this is a dce um but graphic just started coming out with 8 by 8s in the in the dce format too which is kind of nice they didn't used to do that but when they started doing kits they started um adding an 8 by 8 which is kind of nice so you have to buy one um uh, 12 by 12 DCE and the rest are going to be the 8 by 8. So anyways, I chose that because of the scale. So these are a half inch wide. And then each one of these flaps is 7 by 11. 7 by 11. And you're going to score at half inch, four and a half inches. And then this is a pocket. And I'll show, it to you, show you an, uh, an unfinished one here. So you've got this half inch, four and a half, and then this is eight and three eighths. This is gonna get folded over and these two tabs are gonna get glued down to become a pocket. So when you're finished, it looks like this. And it's gonna get installed like this. You open the page, you open again, and then you've got this little pocket. And that's what's right here. It's just kind of hard to see. So let me tuck something in. So there's your little pocket. So again, it's seven by 11 half inch, four and a half, eight and three eighths. You're gonna need two for page one. So once I um, finished cutting these out and applying, I applied my strips first, then I joined these two with a piece of removable tape and it just helped me get this centered between these two um, uh, strips of designer paper. So that is it for page one. I apologize for not recording what I was doing. Hopefully I was clear enough. If you're still a little bit confused, go to page eight and I'm going to build it actually and record what I'm doing. So that's it. Um, the next thing is I'm picking, uh, picking out one of the cut aparts to feature here on this page. One side will get glued down and I wrote myself a note over here that says magnet. We're gonna place a magnet on this side and that's what's gonna hold all of this together. Nice and neat. Okay, I'll be back soon with the designer papers and my, um, the, <coughs> excuse me, featured cut apart. Hey everyone, okay, I've made some design choices and I'm ready to go. So I wanted to mirror the edges here, up here. So I've cut two half inch pieces and I'm going to join them here in the middle. I think that's what I'm doing, uh, like so. And then I'm gonna add these candy cane stripes in the middle. And then lastly, I'm going to lay this on top and this is the cut apart that I'm gonna use and back with a magnet. And again, we're on page one. So this is what it's gonna look like and we'll have the candy cane stripes here which pulls the candy cane back in uh, from this image as well. Okay, so I'm gonna start by laying down these two half inch strips. And I need just a second, I was, yeah. I kind of went back and forth about whether or not I wanted it to be a half inch wide or total or an inch wide total uh, because these are only a half inch. But it looked a little too skinny that way, so I'm going to start by adding these. These are going to go right on the edge of these um, two flaps. And I want this, I need to make sure I've got them in the right order. I want this to look like when it's laid down, really like one piece. So instead of having a border around it here on this side, I'm gonna push it flush with the edge. Like so. So there won't be a black um, border around this edge, but I will put, um, uh, a color block line here, and then of course on this edge. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. It's kind of hard to explain, but very easy to demonstrate. Okay, again, I am uh, using ink on the edges to knock off the white core, and I'm using mahogany. Okay, 
then I'm going to do the other side. And I want this to look like a continuous pattern, so I'm going to line it up just like so. Okay, see how it's coming together and there's no black between it? That's the look I'm going after. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is trim down these two pieces to fit. Okay, and I am going to have a small um, space between, I think it goes, this way, yeah. I am going to have a small space in between this purple and then this um, candy cane, and then I'm also going to have a small gap on this side for a couple of reasons. I want that border. I think it looks good, but the other reason is if you put your um, paper, this this one, too close to the hinge when you open it, it's going to get caught up. So we're going to make sure that we've got a border. Now I I trimmed this out and I split it in half, and I want this to look like a continuous pattern also. So. Make sure you line that up first, and then we're going to trim from these outside edges. If you trim from the inside edge, then your pattern won't be, um, it won't flow. Okay, so right now I'm going to use my pencil, which I, here it is. I was going to say, which I don't know where it is, and I'm going to do my, my marks, and then I'll put it in the trimmer. And I'm marking the top and bottom just in case any any of these did not go in straight. If it didn't go in straight, then I'll cut this edge on an angle. And, um, and then it'll look straight when I lay it in. And if you followed me before, you know that's a technique I use when I'm color blocking because sometimes these thin strips will go in slightly um, not square. So I'll be right back. Okay, let's see how we did. That looks pretty darn good, so I'm gonna go with that. And it just so turned out that it was pretty square. That, that doesn't always happen, but it was true in this case. And I think part of why that happened is because I taped these two panels together before I laid them in. I think it gave me a more square 90 degrees on my uh, corners. be nice if both sides were that way but it's highly doubtful <laughs> but because you have a dark border your eyes are drawn to those edges so when they're when it's off like this even though it's just a slight bit it really shows up that's why it's important if you're doing any kind of internal bordering that um, you try to true it up by trimming the paper it's going to be much more obvious this is much more obvious than cutting through the purple a little bit all right, so um, I'm good to go, or we're good to go. It's upside down, but it's a universal pattern, so it doesn't really matter which way you put it in. Now, in this case, because I know I'm putting an ephemera piece over top of it, I want to make sure this line looks good because we're going to have a whole lot of distraction here in the middle. That's going to take your, your eye to the outside or to the image in the middle, but not so much this um, borderline. Although it is pretty darn straight. Actually, it's not. I'm going to lift it and do it again if I can. If I work quickly, I can. Okay, it's off just a slight bit. A little more glue and I'll have time to uh, nudge it into, into, into line, in line. Okay, 
better better. Those details make all the difference to making it look, you know, really finished and um, clean. It's a it's a whole different concept from, say, for example, um, I'm just trying to pick up that glue while it's still wet. Uh, junk journals where the more uneven, the better, right? So we've got lots going on with just the pattern. Um, we don't want to um, make it any any fussier by not having good clean lines. And it's particularly important when you're working with a pattern that has lines, like this one. This looks pretty good too. Yeah, I'm going through the middle of the candy cane on both the top and bottom, so it's pretty good. <clears throat> I think I need to take a smidge off on this side. All right, let's see. That did it. Perfect. Oh, you know what? It's not too late. I was supposed to put a magnet here, but I haven't put this side down, so I'll put the magnet on this side. Even though I wrote it down, you guys watch me do it, I forgot. So there we go, we're gonna put a magnet here. So the next thing we need to do, I'm gonna take this into place temporarily with that tape. What did I do with it? I don't know what I did with it, so I'll just get another piece out and remove it. That's double sided. There we go. I just want to put this in place temporarily until I decide uh, where the center line is for this. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over. We're going to find our center line. That's not a lot. Oh, I'm, I'm going to start loading stuff up on Instagram. We haven't used that platform much. Um, scrap and create Instagram. I just started putting a few things out there. One of the things I put out there is a nice picture of Nala. You guys have asked often, often, what does she look like? So there's a picture of Nala out there for those of you that are interested in seeing my furry family member. Okay, so I've marked on both sides, I'm gonna add glue on this side. She says, I'm overdue for my walk. And, oops, I guess I can, no, I don't need to move that. It's only on this side. I'm just centering it, eyeballing it, top to bottom. There we go. All right, so now we can, because this is on here, we can add the magnet, because we'll know where it goes. Okay, let me get my heavy duty tape. Well, I hope everybody's doing good. That's too small. Um, this is our last Christmas uh, album for the year. Um, somebody else was gonna do this and then plans changed. So that's why I sort of set aside come one, come all. I wanted to try to get this out 
You won't have a lot of time, but you'll have a little bit of time to try to get a Christmas album out. This should have come out uh, a few weeks ago. Um, but like I said, some plans changed, so it is what it is. Okay, there we go. Now we're ready to add this piece. <sighs> I was just checking to make sure I hit the record because I'm having one of those days. And that's from taking three weeks off. I just almost have to learn how to record all over again. Okay, so there's our the A side of page one. I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping and then when I come back, we're gonna do the inside panels. Yeah, I'm really happy with the way that looks. I'm glad that I didn't leave a border between um, so that your eyes wouldn't be drawn to this center seam. Okay, it looks good. Okay, I'll get my uh, B sides lined up and I'll be back with you guys very soon. Okay, everyone, I've lined up all the papers for um, the inside of page one, so let's get started. As you recall, um, when we left off, this is what the um, closed position looked like. So let's start by laying in the centerpiece. So this is just going to be one solid piece and it is from the 8x8 collection pack. So this is a DCE, but Graphic 45 released an 8x8 in the, um, uh, with it this time. They've been doing that uh, for the last couple DCEs, and I think it's because they've been doing some kits, the Graphic 45 kits, and that's what's driving the scale. It used to be that DCEs only came in 12x12. So I'm using 8x8 and 12x12s. All right. Here we go. Now, if you remember, um, we inset the two flaps uh, half inch. So that means the eight by eight fits right inside, which is nice. Okay, then the next thing is this. Is that right? I have to think about it. I have to lay it back out. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And that, that, that. And that, yeah, that's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start on the left-hand side and then we'll work our way across. Um, while I was away, in addition to picking out the patterns, I also inked all my edges. And again, I'm using Mahogany. I know, honey, I'm almost done. When I get um, done with this page, we'll take a break. I'm talking to Nala, everyone. <laughs> and uh, go for a walk. But I want to get this done so I can start the upload. Okay, this is uh, from the 12 by 12 and you can tell from the scale. It was um, some of the pattern paper that I had left over from trimming this out. And this is page one, build one, just so you know. So if you build in the same order I build in, you should definitely have enough papers um, and the right sizes of the papers to match my pattern layout, if you want, if that's what you're interested in. Okay, and if you recall, when we did this, we left a little opening on the top so we could slightly tuck this pattern in. Now we're gonna go ahead and tack it closed. Actually, I think it is closed. Well, I could probably put a teeny tiny bit of glue here, not much. Okay, normally my pockets have a gusset, um, but because of this page design and flap design, I just, I had enough paper left over, so why add um, a separate pocket? So there you go. 12 by 12. No, I gotta double check. <laughs> The scale looks pretty. No, this is from the 8x8. Eight by 8x8. Eight. 8x8, eight. 8x8. Eight eight eight. Okay, 
and then let me double check 12 by 12 and this is from the 12 by 12 the polka dots I know. She's very talkative when she wants to get out. Mm -hmm. Just a minute. I'm moving as fast as I can without making mistakes. Okay, well, I hope everybody's doing good. Had a great Thanksgiving holiday and are enjoying the current holidays. I'm more in the Christmas spirit this year than I was last year for sure. Okay. All right, and then the way I trimmed this out is I wanted this edge, which is the one against here, to match this side. I'm not sure I'm in. So I wanted these both to have the, the thin stripes. So you may want to consider that. It's not that significant, um, but I think it makes it look a little nicer. It looks like I need to open up my side just a little bit. So I'm going to use my spatula to do that and then I'll tack it back down after we get our um, pocket lined. You could also trim this down. I like having some of it go in the pocket um, because if it matches exactly right here, sometimes when you're pulling things out, it wants to grab that edge. But if it's tucked in, you don't seem to have that problem. I don't seem to have that problem. I'm starting to freak out that I didn't have, yeah, I was starting to think I had turned my page upside down, uh, but I didn't. It's always good to check, check, and recheck. These patterns are definitely directional. It would, it would matter. Okay, now I'm going to lift this up, tack that edge, do the same over here. I'm just putting a teeny tiny drop because it's going to spread out for you anyway. Okay, there is our spread for page one inside. Now I've trimmed these out. They're going to go right here, and I think it pulls in the tan from here. This is from the 8x8 pack. And I chose this because this is the 8x8, and the scales go together. You could have used the larger one, but I'm going to save that um, for a different page. So, so the only thing on the inside from the 12 by 12 is the candy cane. No, that's not true. The polka dots also. The polka dots and the candy cane. And then the last piece is to cover the back side of the um, cut apart. And I'm pulling the candy cane back in. I think I'm going to turn it this way, where I have that nice, clean candy cane right there. It looks beautiful. Nothing's going to be going in and out of this, so I'm just going to butt it right up against here. It doesn't need to go under. For those of you interested, the next album is going to be um, Tea Party, the Graphic 45 Alice Collection. So I think that'll be a lot of fun. Okay. There we go. Page one. Thanks, everyone. Be back soon with page two.